Hello everyone, I'm sat here today with Steve Holmes, a tax advisory partner here at Azet. So Steve, in short, what is R&D tax relief? So R&D tax relief is an absolutely fantastic tax relief. It was introduced over 20 years ago by the government at the time. So the theory being they wanted to encourage UK businesses to do more innovation and encourage businesses around the world to come to the UK to undertake their innovation. And it works by way of a corporation tax relief. We've broadly had two schemes over the last 20 years, which has been a scheme aimed at large companies and a scheme aimed at the small, medium enterprises, the SMEs. So the way the SME scheme has worked, it's worked by way of a super deduction. So you already get tax relief for your R&D expenses, but the super deduction gets you more tax relief, which either reduces your corporation tax bill, or if you're loss making, you can actually swap those losses for a cheque from the government. Then the large company scheme, they actually changed a little while ago to be an above the line credit. So the above the line credit is there so that you receive a taxable credit based on your R&D costs. And the reason behind that was so that when people sat at large companies around board tables, they actually noticed the benefit of the R&D tax relief claim rather than it being hidden in the company's tax computations. But broadly speaking, a fantastic tax relief that reduces businesses' corporation tax bills. And I've heard that HMRC are raising a lot of inquiries around R&D. Is that true? Yeah. So the numbers that we hear are that 20% of R&D tax relief claims have been inquired into and that there have been 18,000 R&D inquiries opened over the last year or so. So it must be said, we actually do really support HMRC's endeavours in this because there have been lots of sort of dubious claims where people have been putting claims in for things that don't actually qualify, have been people have been pushing the boundaries or doing technically inaccurate claims. The only thing we would say is we'd maybe rather HMRC focused on the, the, the noticeably wrong claims or the ones where, where, where there clearly isn't an advancing technology. So what we're finding is actually HMRC are also opening lots of inquiries into some of our really fantastic clients who are doing really strong technological advances. We also find that actually the inquiries themselves are quite onerous. There's, there's a lot of work involved. So when our clients are putting really quality claims, really well thought through claims, it's really hard to find time to answer all these HMRC inquiries, especially when HMRC are asking so many questions. So we do really support HMRC and it's fantastic that they're trying to cut out all of the dubious claims being been putting in. Just maybe wish they were doing it in a slightly different manner. And how do you make a claim? So firstly, you've got to work out whether you're actually allowed to make a claim. So HMRC say that you now have to pre-notify them that you're going to make a claim. So you have to let them know within six months of the end of the accounting period you're going to make a claim, or you have to have made a claim in the previous three years. You also have to make a claim within two years of the end of the accounting period in which the costs you incurred were incurred. So once you've worked out if you can actually make the claim, then I think there's probably two strands to the claim that are intrinsically linked to each other. So firstly, it's, you need to work out what sort of projects you've been doing as a company that actually qualify for the relief. So HMRC have got quite lengthy guidelines. So we'll educate the competent professionals at the business as to what those guidelines are. They'll read the guidelines and together we can come and work together what projects in each account period actually qualify for the relief. And then once you've got a load of qualifying projects, you can actually allocate the cost. So the second strand is working out what costs you can include in the claim. So HMRC, you've got very specific cost criteria and rules that we must adhere to. So you work out what projects you've got, you allocate the costs to those projects, and then you've got a fantastic R&D report. So you submit an additional information form to HMRC using their portal. Once that's been submitted, you can submit your corporation tax return with your R&D report and the R&D calculations in there. And hopefully within a couple of months, you get a nice refund from HMRC. Thanks, Steve. That was really interesting. If you'd like to speak to us about an R&D claim, please get in touch with Steve or your local Azette advisor.